Okay guys, today I'm gonna to walk you through filling out your FFL application. Okay guys, so you decide you want your license and all that stuff today, I'm gonna walk you straight through how to fill everything out. So the first thing, it's important to understand um, the process of getting your FFL. So pretty much this, this is it right here, the ATF they have on their page, it's literally on their webpage, it's super short. So essentially, first thing is, you decide you want it, uh, you pick your type. Okay, second of all, this first review and background check. So you're gonna um, notice they process your fee first. So if you don't pass your background check, your fee's gone, you're never getting that back, kiss goodbye, welcome to the government. Anyway, so uh, they're gonna do that. They're gonna conduct a background check on, on you, all that. Um, and then after all that's gone through and everything looks happy, um, then they're gonna do the interview and final review. So this is somebody's gonna come out from the ATF. They're gonna interview, they're gonna talk to you. They're gonna um, actually inform you on all the laws and all that stuff. Um, and then you're gonna go through. Uh, then they'll, they'll they write their applications, whether, whether they were think that you should get it or not and all that and then it takes like 60 days to process and um yeah so that's pretty much it here so today i'm going to go through that process of filling out your application itself okay so this is what the application looks like when you first get it you're like oh my goodness this thing is 12 pages long but in actuality it's really not too bad so this is the first page some information a little bit more information on the second page um then this is the uh the um the responsible person questionnaire, uh, very similar to 4473, some information down here, and then that's it. So it's actually only four pages of the application. After that, it's just, in, so here's a bunch of instructions. Um, here's a bunch of the definitions for various things if you have questions, um, some more stuff. And then it just, this, this, this form, you'll fill out the top four pages and then it just fills in the bottom four pages as like a duplicate. Um, so anyway, that's it. So it's literally just these top four pages is all we have to fill out. So don't freak out, it's not super long. Okay, so let's go through. So first one, uh, applicant's business activity type is, put whatever type this is. Are you an LLC or your corporation or your collector? Um, I just put individually, individual because I didn't have an LLC or nothing like that. Um, if you're gonna be doing a lot of business activity, I recommend getting an LLC or something like that, primarily because it gives you a nice legal shield, it lets you write off more things on your taxes, it's kinda of nice. Licensee name, so this is gonna be your name, John Doe, cool. Uh, trader business name, again, we're doing this as an individual, so there's no um, thing there. If it is a business, you're gonna put your business name right there. Employer identification number, again, no business, so don't worry about it. Name of the country, not county, country. So this is gonna be, um, it's gonna be uh, America. Uh, don't put America, you'll get denied. Put America. Or, well, you actually, you put United States of America is what you're gonna do. Uh, business activity address, this is going to be it. Um, we are going to put uh, Llama Lane, Llama Street. Middle of, okay. Okay, uh, anyway, so you put your address there. Uh, your mailing address, that go if different from the address in number six, most of the time it's gonna be the same. Contact number, um, so this is gonna be the business activity phone number, it's gonna be 555, this is gonna be for your phone number, 555-1234. Okay, um, fax number, cell phone number, put mine under this business, act business slash activity phone, because that's my phone. I do have a self, but it's the same thing, so I just left it that. Business email, I'd recommend making some sort of email um, you, they're free, so just do whatever. So, um, email, you know, at, at email.com or whatever. Okay, describe the specific activity the applicant will engage or intends to engage in, which requires federal unlikes. Okay, so this is important. Sell of ammunition alone does not require an FFL. So if you're just selling ammunition, um, you know, that you bought at the store or somebody else, that's fine. But sell of ammunition that you manufactured does. So if you're planning on reloading ammunition and selling that, whether you're casting even projectiles, um, then that does. So this, uh, for me, I, I put casting, uh, selling cast projectiles um, and occasional reloaded ammunition. So... That's what I put because that's what I was doing and selling cast projectiles requires an FFL. So if you're just going to be selling um, firearms, great. Um, 
whatever you're going to be doing that goes there well you have to be engaged in some sort of business activity so that needs to go there that's really important um so they, they want to make sure you actually need an FFL. Okay, uh, this next one, description of license types. So here's the different FFLs. I made a video on the different types of FFLs. You can go see that here if you don't know that. Um, I did an 06 is what I have, so not any of the cool ones. You'll probably want an 01. Notice it does say that you can do multiple types of FFLs if you, if you need different types of FFLs. So you're selling firearms, manufacturing ammunition. Great, cool. Um, and then... Total fees, I thought it automatically added this up. Apparently it doesn't, and it doesn't let me fill it in. But anyway, their thing sucks. Okay, method of payment, check, whatever you want. Um, you can just do whatever car, credit card you want. Just fill in that. If you can't figure out how to fill in your uh, credit card things, then, then yeah, well, you don't deserve for an FFL anyway. Okay, I'm paying an application fee. Uh, for the following person corporate or partnership so if you're doing an individual that goes there if you're doing this is my john doe and then application fee my total uh let's see i'm doing my 01 and 03 or something like that that's going to be 230 dollars dollar sign there okay cool and then signature card holder and date that's going to be you and date Okay, hours of operation availability of business activities. You have to provide at least one hour for which you can be contacted by ATF personnel. So I went Monday, uh, Monday through Friday. I just put 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. Um, I have another full-time job, but that job I can answer the phone while I'm there. So if I if they need to contact me, those are great hours to contact me. If you just want weekends, that's fine. You just have to have some hours that you're going to be available for them to talk to you. Okay, this if you're only providing for the collectors, then you can skip. Um, all this stuff here and just skip to straight straight to item 18. Okay, um, here's the thing. So was the business obtained from someone else? So if you're buying it and then you're getting their FFL, you're gonna say, hey, this is the previous business. This was their license number. Okay, that doesn't apply. So um, I'm just gonna put no because I'm getting my first one. Indicate the type of business premises. Okay, what type of businesses are you? This ain't that hard. Um, mine was a single family dwelling, but if you're a storefront, office, condominium, hotel, hotel, motel, they would probably have a lot of questions as to why you're running an FFL out of a hotel or motel. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, don't put that one unless you don't wanna get the FFL and don't run an FFL out of a hotel or motel. Um, Okay, applications, business premises, is owned, whatever, rented. If it is rented, you're going to have to put that because they're likely to let your landlord know what you're doing. Okay, um, do you intend to sell firearms at a gun show and or conduct internet sales? I did no because I didn't need to. You can put yes. All this is going to do, it's not going to change with your likelihood. Well, let me check both. That's dumb. It's not going to change the likelihood of whether you're going to get your FFL or not. But what it's going to do is when the ATF... Um, person comes out to talk to you about getting your FFL, they're going to know, hey, do I need to talk about gun shows and internet sales and stuff like that? Uh, you have to conduct background checks at gun shows, you know, FYI. Okay, this is this is important. Do you intend to use your license only to acquire firearms and enhance your personal collection? If you hit yes on this, you will get denied your FFL. The FFLs are for doing business uh, and you have to be actively engaged in doing the business of transferring, selling firearms, and all that stuff. If you aren't, you will get denied, by the way. Okay, um, Chief Law Enforcement Officer. Uh, one, I had a question somebody asked me, who is this? So this is going to be the Chief Law Enforcement Officer of your area. So for mine, I... Um, I live in a moderately sized city, so I just looked up my city, the name, and I put chief of police. And I did that guy, and I notified him, and that's uh, the, the ATF was happy with that. They didn't care. Um, address of them, and then this, this one is the county. Okay, but if you live in an itty-bitty small town without its own police force or something like that, this is likely going to be your county sheriff, and then address, and then the county of that. Um, so the, you're, you're going to want to keep, uh, a copy of all the information and correspondence that you had with the chief law enforcement proof of, um, that you informed them and stuff like that. And it is interesting. Hey, intended chief law enforcement officer, this one provides a uh, notification to the person intent to apply for. So I would actually send this text and say, you know, Hey, I'm, I am doing it. If you have information, this person should not get it. Let us know. That's pretty much it. Okay. Application certification. Please read and initial each of the box. 
box of the business activity is to be conducted under the federal farm license is not approved by state local law premises i'm 6k so is this are you are you operating legally in the city and state in which you reside um the answer should be that um so this these are going to be your initials which i did john doe um, within 30 days after the application is approved, the business activity will comply with the requirements of state and local law. Okay. Yep. John Doe. Also, heads up, they they actually reached out to my city and asked them, like, hey, is this cool? Is it what he's going to be doing? So you're not going to hide this from your city. So if you think you can get it under the table, forget that. They're going to, everybody and their dog is going to know that you're getting FFL. Okay, business activity will be uh, will not be conducted under the license until the requirement of state law. Yep, okay, I'm going to meet state law before I do business activity. A complete copy of this application has been sent, mailed, or delivered to the chief law enforcement officer in the locality, which in the premises list in name six. Okay, so you're going to send this whole thing, a copy of this whole thing to your chief law enforcement officer. Um, in fact, I do believe that's what the one down below is, this copy. Look, it's filling it out for you. Uh, somewhere I thought this said Clio copy. Yeah, Clio copy page one. So they give you a nice page that auto fills itself out. Apparently it isn't on Google Docs, but I know it does on on the computer because I use it. So you give you print it this out, and the last four pages go to your chief law enforcement officer. Okay, so let's go back up here to where we were at. Um, Acquired by USC section 923 D1G certified that secure gun storage safe device will be available at at any place in which farms are sold under the federal okay so look you can't just leave farms lying around as an FFL there aren't um, depending where you're at you know there aren't any federal storage laws or anything like that for an individual but for an FFL they are you're gonna have to have it and in your interview they're actually gonna ask you about like any security items you have security cameras alarm systems all that stuff so just heads up okay part B has been completed and will be submitted for each responsible person okay so notice this uh okay this part B responsible person questionnaire so you can have multiple people underneath one FFL each one of them has to fill out this section, and then it has to be sent in with um, your FFL application. So uh, I, it was just me, so that was pretty easy. Okay, I certified uh, perjury. Going to go to jail. Take my firstborn child. All that. That all, everything is good. Complete. Um, complete. Um, anyway, that you pretty much don't lie on this, guys, unless you want to go to prison. So, and this is going to be application name, signature, date. Um, Okay, this lower section is only for the ATF. Don't approve, ban, withdraw, deny, person for reason for not all this stuff. Don't, don't fill out that section. Okay, here, uh, response person questionnaire. This is pretty much just a 4473 um, for the most part. Uh, it gives you some, uh, like I said, each responsible person has to do it. And and if you have any questions on different things, there is the section of all the definitions down below. So feel free to go and look at that. Uh, also, each each responsible person has to just submit their own fingerprint card and photos. Fingerprints must be clear. Um, all that stuff. Okay. Uh, license application name. This is John Doe. Uh, if being adding, so you can actually add somebody to an existing FFL. That's so if you already have an FFL, you want to add somebody. They fill out one of this, send in all that stuff. And but this is brand for a new FFL, so we're not adding in somebody. Else. So. Okay, yeah, so this this block two, this this could be um, license name. So uh, if this is like a partnership or creation, corporation or LLC, then you would put that corporation there. Um, but since we're just filling this out as an individual, I'm not putting that corporation there. Um, so then this here is going to be the same for me. Uh, Aliases include given, married, maiden names. Um, so uh, people oftentimes call me Josh. Uh, position, title. Okay, for the position and title, this would be like owner, CEO, whatever. Um, for the individual one, I actually put Mr. Um, and... I didn't get denied, so how about that? Anyway, this is going to be your social security number, blah, 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 blah. Date of birth is going to be blah, 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 whatever your birth, date of birth day is. Place of birth, city and state. So this is going to be your city. Uh, let's just go Hershey, PA. 
I don't know why I thought of that the very first thing, but apparently I did. Um, okay, current resident address. So that's going to be your address. You put that in. Telephone number. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Email address. This showed out like I did. Actually put your information here if you can't figure that out on your own. Okay, previous address. Provide every address that you have, have had in the last five years and the dates which you have lived in these address. Um, there's instructions for that. See instruction one. It does tell you that. So um, I think I actually had to use this because I've lived in various places and moved across the country and stuff, especially going to college when I first applied. Anyway, now I've lived in the same place forever. But anyway, um, so fill all that out. And then you're going to do this. Um, uh, that I think that's... That last box is kind of new. Um, anyway, height, I'm, oh, let's go nine feet, even. Uh, nope. And then race, let's go Hawaiian. Uh, put whatever you are, uh, check high color, hair color, just check a box. Check, check your box. Don't check random stuff. You got to check what it actually is. I'm just showing you kind of going through this. Uh, okay, well, there we go. Okay, now, for the following question is given full detail on a separate sheet. So if you have any other, if you have um, any questions about these, then, you know, you can go to the other th the other page. So have you ever held a federal firearms license? If so, um, put the FFL. Odds are if this is your first time, no. Okay, have you ever been a responsible person on a federal license? If yes, okay. Have you ever been an officer or... You know, Corporation holding an F, uh, fire FFL. Okay, no. Have you ever been an employee to FFL? Nope. Have you ever been denied an FFL? Nope. Okay, have you ever had an FFL license revoked? Nope, sure haven't. Are you under indictment, uh, court and felony, other crime, which judge is in you? Okay, so these first ones are FFL related. Now we're kind of in like the 4473 questions. Um, have you ever been um, co convicted in any court, including military court? Read through all these guys. I'm just kind of skimming through them just to kind of show you what, what they all are. Are you fusion for justice? N these are all, you should really start recognizing these as 4473 questions. Are you an uh, unlawful user? Um, don't do pop guys because apparently you lose your second amendment rights. Kind of lame, but you know, it is what it is. Have you ever been uh, educated, mental, defective, or committed in a mental institution? Okay, we've been discharged, honorable discharge. Um... Are you subject to court order restraining from your... Blah, 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 blah. Have you been convicted in court misdemeanor, domestic violence? Uh, there we go. Okay. Country citizenship, America. Uh, have you been renounced? Nope. Uh, are you an alien? Something? Are you an alien who's been... No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, I guess that should be left blank. Yeah, screw it. Okay. Um, if, if you don't, just leave leave 30 38b blank oh they did let me uncheck it cool um put that there and then your sign print your date name and then this this part you're going to print all this out and mail it in there's not an electronic form as far as i know for all this stuff you're going to attach your photo there you're going to go get your fingerprints from whoever does fingerprints around you, you go to walgreens for your photo or whatever and then usually like your court uh either a courthouse or like your jail or somebody will do fingerprints around you the police station your county jail well, somebody will do fingerprints you go get them done i recommend doing them professionally you can actually figure out how to do them on your own but then you have to deal with the ink and most places if you go they do them electronically okay and guys that is it this is it that's all you fill out you send that in um you, you have to notify your chief law enforcement officer and send them an attached copy of this and they, if they have any issues, they'll get a hold of the ATF. Um, they never actually asked for proof that I did notify my Cleo, the chief law enforcement officer. Um, but if they ever did ask and you actually didn't notify him, man, you could get your license pulled in about two seconds. Um, and they may actually ask for proof if you're getting like an 01 or 07, where I was just getting note six. They were pretty chill about it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And you're going to send that in. You're going to send it with your photos. You're going to send it with your passport. Um, uh, your, uh, sorry, you're going to send it with your photos. You're going to send it with your fingerprints. And then you're going to wrap that up, send it in. Somebody, the ATF will contact you. It takes a while. Don't freak out. Nice thing about using a credit card, you'll see when they charge your card, they run that whole background check. And it can take a little while. Then they get a hold of you. <laughs> Person will come out. They'll run the whole interview, inspection, all that stuff. There are their forms. Um, they'll contact your city, make sure you're obeying all the laws, make sure everything's kosher there. Um, and then after that,
uh, they will either give you license deny or and tell you why and all that stuff. Um, the guys, the process is actually really not that hard. It's not worth paying somebody to help you get get your FFL unless you want to do a fancy like destructive devices one. Then, then if you got three grand to throw that, sure, might as well do that. Um, that's about it. I do have several other videos on getting FFL. I have kind of one just going over the process that I'll put here. Um, I have one talking about why you maybe shouldn't get your FFL here. Um, and then here uh, I put the one earlier on the different types of FFL and discussing them as well. Um, okay, guys, if you have any questions on that form or anything, um, I have another common FAQ on FFLs that I'll put here. But anything else, please put in the comments below. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.